Hey everyone, how are you? Welcome to the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show Five O'Clock Club. Um, my name is Sandra Sedmack Angle. People call me Sandy, and I am the the chairman of the show as well as an artist. I'm a, an encaustic painter, and I am here tonight to share with you. Um, my approach to portraiture. Now, before I get started, I just want to tell everyone So, here's the deal, people. Up until like an hour and a half ago, I had um, this whole entire presentation planned out beautifully. I had um, my handy dandy cameraman Randy my husband ready to help me out and he unfortunately had a last minute meeting so somebody's here um, I am I am having an issue finding the live video so I don't know and again guys I, I do apologize I'm gonna get I'm gonna get started in just a minute um, I'm really there I am okay um, I'm gonna try to get through this presentation completely unplanned so if I, if I look a little flustered, it's because I am. Like I just said to you guys who just joined, um, I found out at the last minute I don't have a cameraman, so I am winging this. Not the worst thing that ever happened, but you know, not the best. So anyway, tonight I would like to talk to you guys about uh, portraiture. And my presentation is actually called Portraits from the Heart. Um, when I... When I present my work at shows or in galleries, people often say to me, oh, you paint portraits. And it, it feels sometimes a little dismissive. Like um, their, their initial reaction is, well, I don't want a, a picture of someone else in my home. But I try to explain to them whether I'm actually trying to do a portrait of um, a subject or if I just painting a person, a face, I try to take the painting to kind of a next, the next level. Um, I try to really get to know uh, the person that I'm, that I'm going to be painting. I try to incorporate um, their personality and maybe what they're thinking into the piece. So rather than portraiture, I actually like to call them um, capturing moments in time. So that's what I'm gonna talk to you tonight about. Um, my subject for the evening is um, someone who is really near and dear to me. It, it, she is my mom. Um, today would have been her 99th birthday and, um, you know, I miss her just like I know you guys have loved ones that you wish could be with you and you miss them every day and you want to find a way to honor them. Um, so I thought what better, what better subject to share with you guys when I'm trying to um, show you my process about about putting a little more interest intimacy into these portraits than sharing with you working on a painting of my mom. Um, I actually, 
I went a little crazy. <laughs> I have a um, I have a large format printer, and so I I blew up a lot of of my reference photographs for you guys to see. I was hoping to be able to take you in a little closer. Again, I'm going to try, but we will see how that goes. But I want to show you. I grew up, you know, in Maryland, and this this portrait, this photograph, which you see enlarged back here, was was always in my home. Um, and now it's, you know, it was in my childhood home, now it's in my home, it's in my studio. This is a photograph of my mother, Paulette. Um, I believe she was in her 20s when this was taken. I'm not actually 100% sure how old she was. She never really, um, she never really talked a lot about these these glamour shots that I'm going to share with you, but it's a it's a a photograph that I've I've always wanted to try to capture. I've always tried to want to paint it, and I've always been a little intimidated. I think because the subject matter is so close to me, um, but oh, I see people are tuning in. Hi guys. Um, as I've, as I've gotten a little older and as, as I've gotten more experience as an artist, I thought maybe this would be a good time to try. So, um, when I take, when I, when I am going to paint a new subject and we're just going to say when I, like, for example, if, if I'm, if someone wants to hire me to do a commission of their wife, their friend, their husband, um, you know, someone meaningful in their life, my preferred method is to actually get to meet that person, um, photograph them, get to know a little bit about them. Um, I do, I am an encaustic painter, which means uh, I work with layers of pigmented beeswax. So the, the process that I use is not really conducive to having a model sit for me. So I often take photographs and I work, use those photographs as my reference. Um, if I can't actually meet the subject, I like to get a whole compilation of photographs um, so that regardless of the angle, the the, the picture that the person who's hiring me wants me to paint, I can get to know, I can get to know the person a little bit better. I can study different angles of their face. I can get to know different aspects of their personality. So it occurred to me as I was putting this presentation together, sorry, still a little flustered from having to film myself, but it, it, it occurred to me that I wanted to paint my mom. Someone, like I said, who is near and dear to my heart and that I've known my entire life, but the photograph that I chose to try to paint um, was taken at a time, you know, before, before I was born, before my brothers and my sister were born, probably before um, my mom was even married to my dad. So it, it, it was, it may sound silly, but I had this revelation that my mother had a whole entire life before she had a family. She had a whole entire life when I didn't know her. And I've, I've looked at a lot of these photographs my whole life and never really thought about them in a way, um, in a way before that is trying to tell me a story of who she was. And I guess that's what I, that's what I try to do when I do portraits. Um, I am going to attempt to move the phone up a little closer to show you guys some of these photographs um, a little better. Don't know how this is gonna go. Uh, Diane Turner, what type of camera do you use? I actually have a um, an old Canon. I didn't think it was that old, but I'm 
apparently it is. And sometimes I just use my cell phone. So I'm going to flip this real quick. All right. So this is an, an enlargement of the photograph that I am eventually going to paint. I just want to take you on a little journey. Um, this is a photograph of my mom of my mom and a really good friend of hers as a teenager, just joyful riding her bike. Um, here's my mom younger, maybe being kind of a bad girl, smoking a cigarette, looking glamorous. Um, a couple more portraits. Another kind of fun, sillier um, picture of her, the exact opposite angle of what I want to paint. And this one, my personal favorite. <laughs> this is my mom when she was 19 years old. I know that because this is her handwriting at the top. Paulette in snow, 40. And she was born in 1921. So here she is being a sassy badass laying in the snow with summer clothes on, just being young, um, you know, enjoying life at a time, like I said, when I didn't know her. So doing this project is really, has really helped me think about, oh, sorry guys, I gotta get the camera back on the tripod. But anyway, it's, it's really helped me to realize that even though I knew her intimately and I loved her dearly, I didn't know her her whole life. I didn't know everything about her. So I really want to honor her in her, her youth and her beauty. She was a beauty till the day she died, but um, you guys can see she was glamorous. Um, all right. So, again, I, I, I said my mom was born in 1921. This, today is her 99th birthday. Um, and I've tried unsuccessfully to paint the photograph that you see in the background, but I've never really taken the approach that I, that I've been using for like the last 10 years for other commissions that I work on. So I'm going to talk now a little bit about just in general, after I've got the photographs, after I've studied the person that I want to paint, after I have, um, looked at, looked at the, you know, the lines of her face, the structure of her nose, this, the set of her eyes, um, looking at, you know, the, the twists of the shoulder, I will start to do some sketches. So I'm going to talk a little bit now about, thank you, Carrie, um, how I, how I approach a sketch and some really simple kind of do's and don'ts about portrait work. I'm very flushed. My face is right red. So, I guess you guys, again, I'm trying the best I can, guys. I want you to be able to see the, the piece that, the piece of paper that I'm working on and still, I think you can still reference the photograph in the background. Um, so when people, when young artists or inexperienced artists want to learn portraiture, um, there, there are a lot of things, there are a lot of really common mistakes and misconceptions that, um, that people have, mistakes that they make. And, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the most common misconceptions, and I, I think this goes for any kind of figure drawing, any kind of life drawing, is that people, people find it difficult to draw faces and to, to draw the human body and the figure because 
you think that you know it so well that people tend to draw or paint what they think they see rather than what they're actually looking at. So um, let's use this little, this photograph here as a reference. Oftentimes people will start um, with the shape of a face. And a lot of times people just assume, <laughs> you guys see that, that a face is round. I am a Russian and Czech, so my face is a little rounder than most, but even my face is, is not a circle. Most, most faces are like more, more oval in shape. Um, they're much longer than, than people assume that they are. If you look at the palm of your hand and you hold it onto your face, your face is pretty reliably or people's faces are pretty reliably about the size of the entire shape of your hand, which is surprising to some people. Um, another common mistake that, that people, or another misconception, I don't want to say mistake, is that people tend to want to concentrate on one little area and just draw that area rather than working on the whole piece. Um, Often it's, it's the eyes, because eyes are so intriguing to draw. Um, and often people will look at their subject matter, look at the, the eyes on a face, and want to put them like towards, towards the top of the head. Um, and that's just not correct. If you really look at someone's face, your eyes are pretty much in the middle of the shape of your head. So people's foreheads are a lot bigger than they think they are. I mean, if you look at it, here's my eyes, here's the top of my head, and here's my eyes, here's the bottom of my chin. So your eyes are really almost in the middle of your face. And then when you're, when you're breaking down the rest of the face, it's almost in, in you're gonna split split it in thirds. The bottom of your nose is going to be kind of halfway and then your mouth halfway. So instead of your eyes way up here, your mouth way down here, the features of your face are really condensed into the lower half of the whole shape of your head. Um, all right, does anybody have any questions? You guys hear me okay? I'm just going to try to check to see. No, okay. Doesn't look like anybody has any questions so far. So, um, I am going to now show you the sketch that I worked up before I started my um, painting, my encaustic painting. So I, I try to, um, I like to work large. I don't, I don't like to um, paint small very often, especially when I'm, when I'm doing uh, portraits and painting, you know, moments in time painting people. I like to be able to capture the essence of them, so they're usually a lot larger. Um, I, I do have smaller pieces, but they're usually more abstract. Oh, I'm just going to plug myself real quick. That didn't come out right. Um, I just had my website completely revamped, and I'm super proud of it. I just published it today, so I hope you'll check it out, www.sandrasedmacangle.com. Also on the website, I said earlier, I am an encaustic painter. This presentation, we're not gonna do a whole lot of encaustic painting, so if you are unfamiliar with what encaustic painting is or you'd like to get to know more about it, if you go to my website, um, there are two videos, one introduction to encaustic video and another like next level encaustic video so you can find out a little more, more about my process there. Anyway, we're going to get back to the sketch. So, um, I did this sketch a, a few days before I started the painting and 
it's actually a little larger than life. Um, and I wish that I could share with you guys the first few steps of like the painting and the sketch because they don't always come out looking glamorous. It, it takes a, you know, it really does take a while to um, get comfortable with the shapes that you're working with. I'm looking for my other reference photo. Um, I'm just going to, that's not going to work. Um, I don't think that's going to work either. All right, so I'm going to refer to the sketch and then hopefully you guys can see what I'm talking about in the photograph behind my back. So. When I, when I started this sketch, the initial, the, in, the initial sketch was just a lot of, um, you know, gestures, shapes, trying to, get, trying to get the tilt of her head correct, trying to get um, the curve of her neck correct. And especially, what was really challenging was figuring out the curve of her shoulder. Because if, if that's off, that's gonna, that's gonna throw the entire piece off. Um, when I, started this piece I was I was a little horrified like I have been when I tried to paint this this photograph before um, you know her her nose was sticking out her eyes were askew her um, her nose that's her chin it just it just wasn't good so it, it it took a while to really get comfortable with the proportions that I I'm trying to reproduce and again you're gonna see here that even though this is at an angle and her head is, is twisted over her shoulder, um, her eyes are still about halfway down the shape of her head. And the rest of her features, her nose and her mouth, are kind of all in the lower half of her face. Um, the painting that I am going to be working on, and I'm just... Aw, oh, Amy, thank you. She was a very beautiful woman. Um, is, is going to be a square piece. So I when I sketch, I try to, I usually have the, the board. I know what size the, the finished piece is going to be. So I try to incorporate the size of that board into my, into my sketch. And the board that I'm going to be doing this painting on is a square. So even, even though this piece of paper is horizontal and there's a bunch of white, I really, I really tried to keep the sketch into a square so that when I started to feel comfortable with her features, starting to feel like I was translating um, her personality, um, I'll be ready to move on to the final piece. Uh, you can see one a really important thing for any piece of art really is the composition of a piece. You will notice that, and if and if you look on my website, or if you know if you've seen my work, um, you never really want to have your subject matter dead center in the composition. It just it doesn't make for an interesting overall piece of art. I mean, if, if you have, like if, if I put, if I put her face, no matter how well executed, right in, right in the center of the composition, that's all you're gonna look at. You're, you're not gonna, your eye isn't gonna have reason to travel around the finished piece. So if you'll notice, she is, she's a little off center. Um, and yet, you know, her, her face is strong. Her eyes are strong. She is looking, I feel like she's, she's not looking at the photographer. I feel like she is thinking about or looking at um, someone that, that she loves. She's in a really good, beautiful place when this, when this photograph was taken. But you'll see, even though in the sketch, even though the emphasis is on 
the features of her face because I'm, I'm trying to get these proportions down. I've still um, carried over these really kind of beautiful fluid lines that will eventually be, um, I don't know if that's a chignon. I don't, I don't know what this 1940s hairstyle is called. Um, but you know, it's, it's an elegant updo and just the fact that, um, these lines are here to, to suggest the movement of her hair is making this, this drawing, this sketch a lot more interesting. Um, it's allowing the person, you guys hopefully, to, to help put a story into the piece. To kind of um, make you wonder about what she's thinking and what she's feeling rather than just looking at it and saying, oh, that's a pretty woman. Um, yeah, and like I said, I didn't, although I've seen these photographs my whole life, I, it was really a big revelation for me that I didn't know my mom when these were taken. And, um, you know, it, it's making me wonder. I always knew she had, you know, she was a beautiful woman. I knew she was a little sassy. She was loving, she was caring, she could be, um, she could be difficult, just like I think any mom can. But I feel like this is really helping me to get to know her and a, a little better and appreciate her more, just studying these, this piece. So um, does anybody have any questions about the sketching process or any questions about how to approach drawing a face? I'm. I don't see any questions, so I'm just going to move on. So here's my sketch. Um, and this, you know, this was not the only sketch I did, but this was, this was the most rendered sketch. This, this was the piece that I, that made me feel really comfortable, made me feel like I was starting to connect with her and I was happy enough with the layout and the line to want to move on and translate it onto the, the board. So, okay. I don't know. All right, I'm going to have to do some readjusting so you guys can see this, I think. This is... This is the encaustic piece that I have been, sorry, I know I look like a crazy person. I can't see if you guys can see or not. Can somebody let me know? Can you see this okay? So Amy did have a question. Amy asks, how do you use multiple photographs to capture one image? or moment in time versus just using one photo? That's a good question. Um, I, I use the photographs to teach me a story. Um, with, you know, with this piece, I knew that this was the photograph that I was gonna use as a reference piece to paint. But um, if, if I did not know the person that I was painting, I, I like to try to capture their personality. I like to try to capture um, things that they feel, emotion into the piece. So looking at just one photograph doesn't work for me. I like to put, like I said, like a montage together to feel like I am getting to know my subject better. It's also really helpful to be able to discern um, their features because I mean I'm sure you guys all have a photograph of yourselves where you're like wow that's amazing that looks nothing like me um, or I don't know if that was the right way to say it but it's it's super helpful to be able to see 
the subject that you're working with from many different angles. And like I said, really, for me, it's mostly just to kind of figure out who they're about and try to incorporate some of who they are into the piece rather than just like a physical rendering of what they look like. I hope that answered the question. Thank you, Renee. Um, okay, so I think you guys said you can see this all right. So um, I, like I said, I, I started this piece probably like a week ago and I really, really had to restrain myself because I started, I really started to enjoy working on it and I didn't, I wanted to share with you guys part of this process before I finished the piece. So I physically had to make myself stop. Um, so the photograph that I'm working from, like I said, was probably taken like in the, the 40s, old black and white um, tinted. So I wanted to honor that aspect of the, the photograph and try to recreate the feel of that old vintagey black and white tint. Um, Lisa says, the broad strokes are so wonderfully gestural. Does the medium and encaustic help to keep you from fussing over detail? Good question. Um, it really does. For those of you who um, are not really familiar with encaustic, it is literally painting with liquid beeswax. And as you work the piece, you have to fuse the layers together. So, so your piece is always going from solid to liquid to solid again. So, um, the more that you get familiar with the medium, the more control you have over it. But because of the, the, the fusing, and I'll show you guys some of that in a minute, there, there is always a looseness to the finished piece. So good question, Liz. Um, okay, anyway, so I wanted to honor, wow, my nails look amazing. Um, I wanted to honor the, the, the vintage, the feel of, of the vintage photograph. So rather than starting on a, a white, board. I always, I always work on wooden panels. I don't work on canvas. Um, I coated the board with, um, with layers and layers of dark gray wax to give it that, um, like I, I keep saying that vintage feel. And once that was done and those layers were sealed, I started to sketch the piece, you know, referencing Referencing the sketch, you know, the, the Conti sketch that I did onto the encaustic panel. I do that in um, a couple of ways. Sometimes if, if I'm doing a, a more gestural abstract piece, I'll literally take a carving tool and kind of carve that sketch into the board. But for this piece, I took um, I used oil pastel and so rather than using like the Conti or the charcoal that I used for my sketch on paper, sorry, looking for a pastel, um, I just did the initial sketch on this board with a uh, black oil pastel. The, the pastels that I prefer are beautiful, beautiful. Sennelier pastels, but um, you can use any kind of oil. You, you have to be careful what you're using when you're working on an encaustic piece, whatever you're drawing with, uh, has to be compatible with the wax. And the, the wax and the oil in an oil pastel are compatible with the encaustic. So I'm gonna attempt Usually at this point, I would lay the painting flat and my handy dandy cameraman would uh, show you guys what's going on. I'm going to attempt to move this a little closer and see what happens. So you can actually see more of the painting. So I think you can, oh. Looks a little 
creepy on the screen. Um, but you, you can see as I move closer, you, you can see, even though I've put a couple layers of encaustic medium over the board, you can still see the sketch that I created with the oil pastel. Um, you can still see kind of the loose, the loose lines of her hair, the loose lines of her shoulder. And a lot of the freshness of, of the sketch and working with thin layers of wax really appeals to me. And I love to, once I start a sketch, oftentimes a lot of the of the lines from the initial sketch are still going to show in the finished piece. So, um, you know, this, this eyebrow here, and like I said, these, these little lines of her hair and her, her lip are all just the oil pastel and I've sealed them with, with a clear encaustic medium. Um, and you can see I've, I've started some layers of, of just kind of a wash of white and a little bit of, of pink to start to highlight her features. And um, that is building up, you know, that's, that's honoring that quality of this, this vintage photograph. And I also feel like I'm, I'm starting, I feel like I'm starting to recognize her in this painting. Um, when I when I'm looking at her here, I feel like I'm actually starting to see parts of you know of the mom that I knew and loved, even though um, I did not. Uh, what's that expression? I was a sparkle in my daddy's eyes. That politically incorrect to say now when this when these pictures uh, were taken. So I don't. I don't know how I'm going to do this guys, because I really, I really planned on the last 10 minutes or so of, of my presentation actually painting with the encaustic, but I, I, when you work with encaustics, you usually work flat. Um, and this is upright, so that might be a challenge. Lisa wants to know, in general, looks like you work dark to light. Is that always the case? Um, it's not always the case, but with encaustics, um, and it with some mediums, it would be the opposite, but with encaustics, you often want the the darker colors to be more in the background because as, as you layer um, the pigments on top of each other, those darker layers show through and provide extra shadow and the, the whiteness, the highlights just kind of get lost. So I do often add the highlights at the end, especially, especially when I'm starting on a dark panel. So, all right, I'm going to give this a shot. <laughs> uh, I want to show you guys if I can. I am learning new stuff right along with you guys. I have never, ever, ever done a live presentation for longer than five minutes by myself. So um, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope it's we go that didn't work that well now did it um, I think due to the technical difficulties that I'm having I don't think I'm going to be able to share any of the actual encaustic process with you guys I really do apologize um, but I, I hope you enjoyed okay I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up now because I'm starting to have serious there's technical difficulties. Thanks. All right. All right. One more time. Thank you so much for watching, guys. My apologies if it was a little wonky. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. 
And I do want to let you guys know um, there will be no five o'clock club next Thursday because it is Thanksgiving and we want to let our artists get creative in the kitchen and um, share love with their, their families and friends any way that they can in this crazy world that we live in. Um, we are doing something, the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show is doing something new and special this holiday season. We are, we have a juried group of 53 of our September fine artists who are um, contributing work to a holiday pop-up shop and it's going to be live on our website so you guys can buy art, support the artists, get some really amazing, beautiful, unique presents for those that you care about and want to share art with, that the pop-up shop is going to open on November 28th and it's going to stay open until December 15th. So there'll be plenty of time for you guys to buy, plenty of time for shipping and um, I hope you check it out. Once again, thank you so much for coming and, and watching me and thank you so much for bearing with me while I learned how to last minute Facebook Live film myself. So um, have a great night everyone and hopefully we'll see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving.